Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video, we'll go step by step through the abdominal examination of an antenatal case. Before we begin the examination, it's important to explain the procedure to the patient so that she understands what's happening, she feels comfortable and gives you the informed consent. If you're a male doctor, always make sure there is a female attendant present. Now first, let's get ready. Ask the patient to empty her bladder. Sanitize your hands properly and rub them together to warm them before touching the patient. Ask the patient to lie down in a dorsal position. That means flat on her back with her thighs and knees slightly flexed. This position helps to relax the abdomen. Expose the abdomen from the ziphy sternum to the symphysis pubis, but ensure the rest of the body remains covered for privacy. Stand on the right side of the patient. Alright, now let's start with inspection by simply looking at the abdomen. First, you have to notice the shape and symmetry of the abdomen. Normally, the abdomen should be rounded and symmetrical. If you see an asymmetrical bulge, it could suggest a multifetal pregnancy or polyhydramnios or fetal malposition. In the third trimester, the shape of the abdomen can tell you about the fetal lie. If the abdomen is vertically elongated, the fetus is in a longitudinal lie. If the abdomen looks wider than expected, the fetus may be in a transverse lie. If it looks diagonal, it could be an oblique lie. You may notice a suprapubic flattening, that is a reduced convexity or indentation in the suprapubic region just above the symphysis pubis. This could indicate engagement of the fetal head in the pelvis in the later stages of pregnancy. If there is a subumbilical flattening, that is flattening below the umbilicus, it could suggest an occipital posterior fetal position where the fetal back is directed posteriorly. If the abdomen looks too large for gestational age, think of polyhydramnios or a macrosomia. On the other hand, a smaller than expected abdomen could indicate growth restriction. This needs to be assessed further. Now let's look at the skin. You might notice a dark line running down the midline. That's called the linea nigra. It's totally normal and happens due to hormonal changes. Next, look for stria gravidarum, also known as pregnancy stretch marks. Then look for the presence of any scar from previous cesarean section or any other incisional scar mark on the abdomen. Also look for any skin lesions or infections. Now look at the umbilicus. If it's everted, that's normal in advanced pregnancy. If it's deeply depressed, it might mean that the fetal head is already engaged. And if you notice a bulging umbilicus, think about an umbilical hernia, especially in a multiparous woman. Sometimes, if you watch closely, you might see fetal movements. These are like little kicks or rolling motions under the skin. Now look for any bulging areas on the abdomen. These could be hernias or diastasis recti. Diastasis recti is the separation of the rectus abdominis muscles along the linea alba. And the reason could be hormonal changes in pregnancy, multiparity or even polyhydramnios or prior abdominal surgery. You may also notice dilated veins on the abdomen. This is usually mild in pregnancy due to increased blood flow, but if it's severe, you have to rule out conditions like IVC obstruction or portal hypertension. Alright, now that we have completed inspection, let's move on to palpation. Before we begin, there are a few general principles to keep in mind. Always use the palmar surface of your fingers rather than the fingertips for palpation and avoid applying excessive pressure. The goal is to assess, not to cause discomfort to the patient, so be gentle. If the patient is experiencing Braxton Hicks contractions, wait for the uterus to relax before proceeding. 
palpating during a contraction can give misleading findings and it may also be uncomfortable for the patient. Always stand facing the patient while performing all obstetric grips except for the fourth maneuver where you need to face the patient's feet and follow all the points mentioned in step 1. In palpation, you have to first locate the fundal height. Use the ulna border of your left hand and move it downwards from ziphy sternum like this till you encounter a resistance. The place where you encounter the resistance first is the uppermost level of the fundus. You can mark this point in the midline for measuring the symphysiofundal height. If the uterus is deviated, you need to centralize it first before palpating the fundal height. Fundal height tells you the approximate duration of pregnancy if you note it in relation to different levels in the abdomen. In the first trimester, the uterus is still within the pelvic cavity and by 12 weeks, the fundus is at the level of the symphysis pubis. From here, we start marking key points at regular intervals, roughly every four weeks. We use three main landmarks, the pubic symphysis, umbilicus and ziphy sternum. The area between the pubic symphysis and umbilicus is divided into two parts and the area between the umbilicus and the ziphy sternum is divided into three parts. By 16 weeks, the fundus is halfway between the pubic symphysis and the umbilicus. At 20 weeks, it reaches the lower border of the umbilicus and by 24 weeks, it's at the upper border of the umbilicus. As the pregnancy continues, the fundus climbs higher. By 28 weeks, it's about one third of the way from the umbilicus to the ziphy sternum and by 32 weeks, it's about two thirds of the way up. At 36 weeks, the fundus reaches the level of the ziphy sternum. After this point, as the baby's head descends into the pelvic cavity in preparation for delivery, the height of the uterus begins to drop. So by 40 weeks, the fundus will be around the same level as it was at 32 weeks. Next step is the measurement of symphysiofundal height. Symphysiofundal height is the distance between upper border of symphysis pubis to the highest level of the fundus as detected by the ulna border of left hand. Take a measuring tape and place the zero mark of the tape over the uppermost border of the symphysis pubis. Hold this end of the tape with fingers of your right hand at this place and run the tape along the midline of the abdomen by holding it with left hand till you reach the marked point at the highest level of the fundus. Now take the reading in centimeters. After 20 weeks of gestation, the symphysiofundal height approximates the fetal gestational age until 36 weeks of pregnancy. Now let's discuss the obstetric grips or Leopold's maneuvers. The first Leopold maneuver is also known as fundal grip. Face towards the patient's face, keep both the hands flat on the fundal area like this and palpate whole of the fundus gently. Do not poke with fingertips. Fundal grip tells you about the lie of the fetus. If you feel some structure in the fundus, the fetus is in a longitudinal lie. If the fundus feels empty, it suggests a transverse lie. The fundal grip also tells you about the fetal presentation that is which part of the fetus occupies the lower pole of the uterus. On performing fundal grip, if you feel a broad, soft and irregular mass, it indicates that buttocks are in the fundus, meaning the head is down and it's a cephalic presentation. If you feel smooth, hard and globular mass in the fundal grip, it suggests the head is in the fundus, meaning the buttocks are down and it's a breech presentation. Now coming to the second Leopold's maneuver, which is also known as lateral grip or umbilical grip. Stand facing the patient's face, place your hands on both sides of the umbilicus and palpate the sides and front of the uterus, one side after the other. 
For palpating the left side, gently press the right side with your left hand to steady the uterus and palpate the left side with your right hand. Repeat the same for palpating the other side. Steady the uterus from the left side and palpate the right side. You have to carefully notice what you are feeling on palpation. If you get a smooth, curved and resistant feel, it is suggestive of back of the fetus. The limbs feel like small, irregular, knob-like parts. Now you have to notice the position of the back and the limbs of the fetus. If the back is palpated on one side and the limbs on the other side of the midline, it is occipital anterior position. The side where you could palpate the back, the occiput would also be towards that side only. If you palpate it back on the left, it is left occipital anterior position. If the back was palpated on the right side of the woman, it would be right occipital anterior position. When the fetal back is palpated in the flank and more towards the back of the mother and if it is being felt with difficulty and if the limbs are palpated more anteriorly on both sides of the midline, it is occipital posterior position. You can also note the position of the anterior shoulder. In cephalic presentation, the anterior shoulder is palpated as a well-defined prominence in the lower part of the uterus above the head. If the anterior shoulder is in the midline, this suggests that the fetal back is exactly aligned with the midline of the maternal abdomen, indicating a direct occipital anterior or direct occipital posterior position. If the anterior shoulder is away from the midline towards one side, this suggests that the fetus is in a left or right occiput position. Now see, the anterior shoulder lies on the same side as the back of the fetus. If the anterior shoulder is on the mother's left side, the fetal back is also on the left, so the fetus is in left occiput position, LOA, LOT or LOP. If the anterior shoulder is on right side, the fetal back is on the right, indicating a right occiput position, ROA, ROT or ROP. In cases of transverse lie, the head is felt in one flank and buttocks are felt on the other flank. So lateral grip tells you about the lie as well as the position of the fetus. The third Leopold's maneuver is known as Pollux grip or second pelvic grip. Stand facing towards the patient's face, stretch your thumb and four fingers of your right hand like this and place it over the lower pole of the uterus, keeping the ulnar border of the palm on the upper border of the pubic symphysis. Try to approximate the thumb and the fingers to grasp the presenting part and then Try to move it from side to side gently. If the presenting part is not engaged, you can grasp the presenting part and you can move it from side to side. That is, it will be bellotable. Pollux script tells you about the presentation, engagement and attitude. We'll further discuss attitude with the next maneuver. In transverse lie, Pollux script is empty. For performing the fourth Leopold's maneuver or the first pelvic grip, face towards the feet of the patient. Four fingers of both the hands are laid on both sides of the midline at the lower pole of the uterus, above and parallel to the inguinal ligaments. Try to approximate the fingertips by pushing downwards and backwards and try to palpate the fetal part occupying the lower pole of the uterus. The fourth maneuver tells you about the presentation, the presenting part, the engagement and the attitude. If you feel a broad, soft and irregular mass, then it's breech presentation. If you feel smooth, hard and globular mass, then it is head or cephalic presentation. While palpation, if your fingers converge, it means the presenting part is not engaged, whereas the divergence of fingers could mean engagement. Now, in cephalic presentation, the presenting part could be vertex, which is most common, 
or it could be brow or face. For this, you need to know the attitude of the head, whether it is flexed, deflexed or extended. Now you need to observe the relative positions of the sincipital and occipital poles of fetal head. From the lateral grip, you know the side where back is present and the side where limbs are present. Sincipit lies on the side of the limbs and occiput lies on the side of the fetal back. If the occiput lies down and is palpable down towards the pelvic cavity and the sincipit is at a higher level, it is flexed vertex. When both sincipit and occiput lie at the same level, it is deflexed vertex. So if the attitude of head is flexed or deflexed, the presenting part is vertex. When occiput is at a higher level than sincipit, the attitude of the head is extension and here the presenting part could be brow or face. Now coming to auscultation, the best location to listen to fetal heart sounds depends on the fetal presentation, position and degree of descent of the head. You already located the back of the fetus in lateral grip. Fetal heart sound is best audible through the back, encephalic and breech presentations whereas these are best heard through the fetal chest in face presentation. You can use the bell of the stethoscope for this usually in spinoumbilical line in occipito anterior position. As a general rule, auscultate over the fetal back below the umbilicus for cephalic presentations and above or around the umbilicus for breech presentations. Place your hand on the opposite side of the uterus for counter pressure if you cannot hear fetal heart sounds. You can also use a handheld Doppler. So, in this video, we covered the complete antenatal abdominal examination, including inspection, palpation, along with obstetric grips and auscultation. All these findings will become clearer and easier to appreciate with regular practice and clinical experience. Thanks for watching.